good? What's good? I'm back. You always truly the one and only Paul Pickett, host of the Paul Pickett Podcast, a.k.a. Triple P, a.k.a. the Common Sense Podcast, your source for music, sports, politics, world events, and much, much more. I'm going to react to a video today, uh, Joe Budden Podcast, talking about Irv Gotti says, Cash Money is the greatest hip-hop label ever, and no one's even close. So I'm going to see what the guys have to say. And then I'm going to give my opinion on this matter. But before we do that, let's give you a word from Dizzle. This, that turn, that lit, that slap. It is that one, that A. Everybody talk about Dizzle. That's that turn, that lit, that slap. It is that one, that A. Everybody talk about Dizzle. They like that. They like, you can dizzle too. Dizzle is a premium luxury liqueur mixed with agave tequila, French cognac, and an orange liquor mango mix. Just throw your dizzle on ice, and it's nice. You want to order your very own bottle or bottles of dizzle premium luxury liqueur, go to dizzlebrand.com, click on our locations, click on one of the top three website links. I recommend Emilio's Beverage. Must be 21 and over. Shipping and handling is included. Below that is locations in California, Oklahoma, Kansas, and Arkansas. Little Rock, here we come. All right, so let's get into it. Um, Irv Gotti says Cash Money is the greatest hip-hop label ever, and no one's even close. And before we get into this, I think he's referring to, like, subsidiaries, independent labels, not really major labels like Universal, Sony, or anything of that nature, but let's keep it moving. Scotty says Cash Money is the greatest record label of all time by far. There's nobody close. In any genre? Hip hop. No, no, hip hop. Oh, okay. Hip hop. Hip hop. Um. He argues that they have been not only present but dominant for 20 years. 20 years. 25 years. 25 years. Or plus, he says. And he's going back to Ha. Right. Which one is high? 94? 90s, 90s, no, 97. Nah, like 99. Yeah, yeah 97, no, 98. No, 98 maybe. Yeah, 98, 98. Yeah. yeah. Something like that. High is my first time here. Now. That's my first. They yeah. were, they were, they but remember. Shit. Let me chime in real quick. I would say they were probably dominant half of that time. They were consistent the first half. They were dominant. The second half. Let's keep it moving. That yeah, point, but that was national. They was yeah, yeah. They that was, was they that's was rocking what took already. them national. Yeah, High is what did it for me. For that's what yeah. did it for yeah. them. You know what I'm saying? Huh? Yeah, Even if you start on the you block, high. high, and you go to but well, see, the podcast, are they, are they dominating now? Yeah, they have Drake. Because Drake is still well, Drake's not there. Is Drake there? That's that's yeah, the thing. Like we don't know. It starts to be a little difficult when you say yo. If he ain't there, it's only been a couple years. It's only yeah. If they take what they have of him, it's the good Drake. The great Drake. Yeah, it's the great Drake still. I agree the great with Nicky. I agree with if you go from high and go to Drake, you like, what the yeah. fuck? I mean, I would make yeah. an argument for Def Jam, though, you as far as definitely can. Uh, they were, what, 84 to, I mean, they're still putting shit out, but like. 84, 84. Well, he's not, up, up, up. he's not talking about majors. But, All right, but like, I like where Parks is going here. Let me cut off Joe Butters. Def Jam didn't start out as a major label. And Cash Money never became a major label. So they started out as a subsidiary, as an independent label, you know. So they grew up into a major label. And that's why I think after it's all said and done, after hearing all this, I think I'm going to have to go with Def Jam. But let's keep it moving. They weren't major at one point. (coughs) Who was major? Def Jam didn't start out as a major label. They were independent oh, yeah. labels. Exactly, yeah, Parks. It's a good one. Okay. He's right. In the same manner that Cash, Cash Money signed Money. out independent and became yeah. a major label. They never became a major label. They, they never, never became, became a, major. a major label. They never became a major label. Well, they're affiliated with Universal. That's a major label. But they're not so a they're major label themselves. Def, Def Jam is a major label. Yes. I agree with that. Well, they're bought by a major label. Okay. Def Jam yeah. is the only person that could potentially yeah. even be in the conversation. Um, Ex- let's exclude so, Def Jam and pretend that he's only talking about the subsidiaries. But you know what I uh, think, though? It's a hard one because I think that 
Um, Yo, Rockefeller's in that conversation that somewhere. Because they stopped making music. Yeah. I think that if Rockefeller, bad boy, would have kept making music, then it's a fight. They didn't. They Puff but, pivoted. J and M pivoted. On. We talking dominant. Cash Money was not dominant when Ha came out. Yes, it took them national. Exactly. You talking about late nineties, early two thousand. There were dominant labels, subsidiaries. That's true. So we're not going to say that their dominant run started what, what, in ninety eight. It right. didn't start too far after Ha. I'll tell you that. Yeah, it, it did. did. Yeah, it, it did. did. No, it did not. It did. I'm talking about did. dominating. Dominating, yes, dominating it didn't did. start Back until that ass up came out in ninety nine. A single. That's not, I don't care about that. I'm just saying. Mm-hmm. No, they had a lot of hip hop. That was hip hop. We're talking about they domination. They hip hop. Yeah. They didn't they dominate dominate. until probably Carter 2, II, Carter 3 Wayne. Which came out when? Carter 3 Wayne. 07, oh, eight, oh, Yeah. Eight, what are we eight, talking about? That's true. First half. Carter 2 came out in 07. Oh, what are y'all talking three, about? 06. Oh, maybe it's 06. Carter 3 Wayne. Let's fa- let's fact check. Okay, let's let's before we argue. Because I think that. Because I want to argue about it. I don't know if they're. Quote the word domination really. That, Just tell me when Carter I'm, 2 I'm came going, out I'm going before to. I know if I agree with Ice or disagree with Ice. 2005. December 2005. And I'm the overall. I would say Carter 3 really. I thought it was Carter 3 because yeah. that's when it, that, that was the million Carter first three was week. It. That, so Carter the first three, that was when years. it really. Carter up. 3 was it. Carter 3 was it. That's domination that's starting there. Right. I would when that shit with. went platinum, what was it first day or first week or something? Unheard of shit. So. That's when it starts. I agree. It won't dominate until like Carter III. I'm just III. saying. We, no, no, I'm just saying. But that's where now let's compare years. Who do y'all think challenges that? Because I'm not counting domination. I'm t- I'm coming from inception to where you at. But who but, do you think challenges? But in hearing that? Irv, that was Irv's really foundational well, thing yeah. was they had a longer stretch than anybody but else. Irv- See, that's where Joe Budden's just killed his whole argument. He says, I'm not going off of domination. I'm going off of inception to where they started, to where they're at now. Well, then you got to go with Def Jam. Because Def Jam has put out far more artists. Um, some of those cash money artists won't really that big. You know, once you get past Lil Wayne, Drake, Nicki, and the Hot Boys, the rest of those artists were really just average, average success. Def Jam had Run DMC. They had their big three from early get starts. LL, Run DMC, and Beastie Boys. And then they've had, um, I mean, they've had Jeezy, Rick Ross, Method Man. Um, There's just so many. There were just so many. Uh, ja Rule, Murder, Inc. There was a lot of big acts that came through Def Jam. And so you can, if you're going from when they were first started to where they are now, Def Jam has to be it because they're a major label now. And Cash Money is not major label. So, like... Joe Budden's really just like killed his whole argument with that like double standard there. He's talking as a record executive, and he that's is. why I'm trying to get off he ISIS is. point. Because as a record executive, if you drop high in 90, whatever that was, yeah. and every year you keep dropping slaps or it's close to slaps. Mm-hmm. They have slaps. No, they have, they have, up, slaps. Up, have slaps. Up until you get to dynasty time, like what they did from high to 05 Rockefeller wins that, that don't matter though no I'm saying a Rockefeller I'm not talking from, about in that window no I'm just saying but, oh see that's what I was talking I'm about not talking in that about window in that because window. from high to 05 you, you could say uh, 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 reasonable doubt I mean not reasonable doubt um, blueprint no before that uh, Hard Knock Life came out mm-hmm. in, in, in 97 98 and then Jay Z went on a ten yes. year level of I put hip hop on my shoulders. Mm-hmm. Juvenile and all of them were still making songs. Wayne and all was still was making songs. Jay Z was yep. the pinnacle of hip hop from ninety eight until oh what oh nine. I said until the Wayne run started. Yeah, yeah. until the Wayne run. So started. that's a, that's the same amount of time. And so at that time, nobody could deny that Rockefeller Records was it. I don't even know how Rockefeller got in this conversation. You said the as subsidiaries. A as a label. As a label. Okay, Jay-Z slows down around whatever year you just said, and now I... And Kanye now, kick up. And, and now... Kanye, and now I bring yeah. you Drake. Uh, what valid, are you talking that's about? Valid, that's valid, what are you talking valid. about, Joe? That's completely valid. I didn't even think it's about that. It's not valid, yo. I and I hate to argue that. timelines with y'all, because college dropout came out when? He didn't kick like, up oh, at the end. 03, 03. He didn't... Kanye West did not kick up at the end of Jay-Z. No, but Jay was still... I'm saying he... 
No, Jay was still Jay. And then Kanye kicked Yeah, he definitely, yeah, he did cause dip yeah. Set. he definitely took the baton. In 2000. He did because Dipset was was popping on, on Rockefeller at the time. That's when Kanye really started taking off with the production. And as soon as he dropped his, started, as soon as Kanye did through the wire, he took the baton and started running with it. In 2009, them niggas bring Drake and Nicki to the front. And it was over. And it, was, it was over. It was over. Now, I'm not even really arguing with y'all. It was over. Because I'm of the brain that I really could count Rock Nation for Rockefeller. That nigga just had to shuffle his business around. You can. He just had to yeah. shuffle his business you around. Can. They can't still. Rock Nation. At, I know that they're two different things. No, so but I won't they try still to, can't compete with no, no, nobody. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. You up, count bro. Rock Nation up, with Rock Nation. Yeah, slow down. We no, talking yeah. about J. Cole. We talking about hip hop. J. Cole. J. Cole. Rihanna don't count. I'm saying. Rihanna no, counts. Rihanna counts. Yeah. Rihanna counts. The same that counts way, in the world. Hey, the same way Ashanti counts for Murder Inc. Yeah. yeah. That hip hop house. I got it. No, if you I'll crack one, keep going though. Why? I'm just saying, <laughs> my nigga, Drake, Nicki, and Wayne on the same label are like having Luca, KD, and LeBron on your team. Like that is a hard thing to beat, my nigga. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, with. but he did it. He said it all wrong. Right now, it would be Luca, KD, and Giannis, not LeBron. But um, let me hear a little bit more. Now I'm gonna chime in. Here you go. I don't want us to argue about this, Irv. I'm not ready to submit to your thinking. Yeah, I don't I know. Can. I don't know if I all the way agree with I this don't. yet. I was at first. I see you. All right. So yeah, let me chime in now. I don't all the way agree either, because. If you take away Nikki, Wayne, and Drake, what's left on cash money? Not a lot to work with. Def Jam, I mean, like, let me, I'm going to have to pull it up. Def Jam. Uh, hold up. List of. Oops, oh, hold on, I gotta pull this one up. Let me grab my other keyboard. List of all time Def Jam artists. All right. Uh, so we got, I mean, like, oh my gosh, no way. No way, no how is cash money over Def Jam. And if we're talking about from birth to where they're at now, yeah, Def Jam, they're probably don't they don't got a Drake and a Nikki and a little Wayne. But when I name all these names, there's no way that cash money is messing with them. LL Cool J, BC Boys, Jay Z, Public Enemy, Foxy Brown, DMX, Kanye West. Ja Rule, Redman, Jeezy, Rihanna, Rick Rubin, Method Man, Nas, Pusha T, Nori, Fabulous, Ludacris, EPMD, Frank Ocean, Jada Kiss, Ghostface, Big Sean, um, Jenny Ico, uh, Jeremiah, Two Chains, Logic. I mean, these are some of so now I'm getting to some of the newer names. Frank Ocean and uh Big Sean is Janae Ico, Logic, Two Chains, Jeremiah. Amory, we got Lady Luck, who's a friend of mine, T LaRock, Slick Rick, State Property, YG, um, Socrates, Uncle Murder, Justin Bieber, uh, Tiana Taylor, Patty LaBelle, Babyface, Osley Brothers, MOP. Um, it's just too many, man. Too many. Pap Chanel, Coco Jones, Bobby Sessions, K. Roosevelt, Stoneboy, Babyface, um, 07 Shake, Nasty C. I mean, yeah, man, I got to go with Def Jam. They started as an independent substay, became a major label. They've had so many. I mean, LL Cool J was platinum for 10 years straight. Beastie Boys had some of the biggest albums ever. Jay Z, Public Enemies, Public Enemies' impact on hip hop. DMX, 
first artist to drop two albums in the first year. You know, I mean, Ja Rule is impact on radio. Kanye West is impact over the culture. Nas, one of the greatest ever. Oh, man. I mean, it's, it's just too much, man. And then, like I said, they got some newer heads like 2 Chains, Big Sean, Logic. Uh, these cats, are, yeah, man. Some people would say Logic had one of the best albums in the last five years, that last album you dropped. I got to go with Def Jam over Cash Money. Paris, Drake, Nick, I mean, yeah, they had dominance with Drake and Nick. But see, that's the thing. Drake and Nicki and Wayne, I, I think to me, I think the – They've had their run. They're starting to fizzle, man. Like the the bottom of the the two liter coke, where it's all flat. You know, they're starting to. We like Button said it, man. Like we've heard all the great, the greatest songs we're gonna hear from Drake at this point. Nothing more. I don't think going forward we're gonna like Drake. I don't think Drake's gonna have any songs going forward. It's gonna be as big as his last big hit, which was probably um. What was Drake's last big drink? Uh, what was it? It was uh what's that last song he did? What was the last joint he did? Um uh, probably like Twit, was it the Twitchy slide? Hotline Bling, like it's like Hotline Bling, or one of those. Like you're probably not gonna get no more records out of Drake. They're gonna be that big and that huge. Um, so yeah, I'm not ready to convert to what um, Irv Gotti is saying. And the fact Irv Gotti didn't pick Def Jam is really weird to me. Once again, thank you for tuning in, Paul Pickett Podcast.